death. You understand that. They didn't know better. In some cases, not in all cases, obviously. Some people did an incredible job. Until this invisible enemy appeared, uh, we were, I mean, we never had an economy like this. But. The Americans were scared, though, I guess. Nearly 200 dead, 14,000 who were sick. Millions, as you witnessed, who are scared right now. What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. I'm not saying, but you know, it's Senator, interesting that you mention two people, so but you don't mention one that happens to be a Democrat. Senator, well, well into this, and nobody's even talking about. Into this, and nobody's even talking about it, except for you, which doesn't surprise me. Americans, though, who say that they have symptoms and they can't get yeah, them. Well, okay. what, do you, what do you say to the Americans I'm not, who are I'm not hearing it. But we don't want everybody to go out and get it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Go ahead. You had a call with Senator Schumer. He says you've now agreed to invoke the Defense Production Act to actually make those medical supplies that hospitals say are in severe shortage. So two questions. Is that what you're doing now? Uh, it is. I did it yesterday. Uh, we invoked it, I think, the day before. We signed it the evening of the day before uh, and uh, invoked it yesterday. We have a lot of people working very hard to do ventilators and various other things. Yes. So you're using it now to tell businesses that you make it. ventilators, masks, we are, respirators? We are, for certain uh, things that we need, okay. including, uh, including some of the very important emergency. I would say ventilators, probably more masks. Uh, to a large extent. We have millions of masks which are coming and which will be distributed to the states. The states are having a hard time getting them, so we, uh, we're using the Act. The Act is very good for things like this. We have millions of masks that we've ordered. They will be here soon. We're having them shipped directly to states. Only, you were signing this, but not invoking it. This is what you said yesterday, and that you would only do so in a worst-case scenario. Yeah. So are we now Last, in a worst-case scenario? Uh, we, we need, no, it's, it's no different other than we need certain equipment that the states are unable to get by themselves. So we're invoking it to use the powers of the federal government to help the states get things that they need, like the masks, like the ventilators. I do want to point to another source of confusion here in the briefing room. The president caused a lot of confusion because he said he actually had invoked it last night. Yesterday, he had clarified and said he had not pulled the trigger on it yet. He had simply signed it, and it was sitting there ready for him to use when he wanted it. But then he seemed to say later that he wasn't requiring companies to actually ramp up production, which is what the act would do. Otherwise, it's just them volunteering to do it. But when we pressed him for clarification on exactly whether or not he was signing it and using it, the president did not offer that clarification. So, John, we're walking away from this still not knowing exactly what is happening with the Defense Production Act. And it means a lot because it could mean some of these companies having to make a lot more ventilators now, a lot more face masks now, all of these supplies that these people say they are going to need for these crush, this crush of coronavirus patients that they're expecting to get. You just said that you haven't had to require companies to up their production of medical supplies. But you said last night you invoked yeah, the DPA. When we need something, when we need something, because of the act, when we need something, we order something. And uh, as you know, two days ago, I invoked the act, which was a big step. I'm not sure that it had been done before, certainly not very much. And uh, when we need something, we will use the act. What has happened is, before we even go out, many, many companies, great companies, companies in a totally different business. Are... We interrupt this press conference for a message from Sven, the Swedish clown. Hello, I am a fan, the Swedish clown, and we are still in the pandemic. <laughs> and there's many things you can do during the pandemic with the coronavirus. You can make believe that Flash and you, this is me, and this is a Flash, and you can say things to Flash like, Barry Allen, I understand that you have to ration the speed force lately. <laughs> oh, yes, Finn. I have to ration the speed force because my power... Well, Barry, we have to ration our own now. We have to ration our food. Yes, I have to ration my speed force. And, and you can also make believe you can't see your parents during the pan pandemic. And this is my father and mother. Hello, father. Hello, Finn. Hello, mother. Hello, Finn. Finn, you need to get a job. Don't start, father. Sven, why did you turn out so bad? Don't start, mother. Sven, you're an idiot. Don't start, father. Well, you can have all kinds of fun during the... Stop it, father. 
anyway, you, I can get the auditions that I always want. There's nobody for auditions now. Anyway, go see Wonder Woman. Turn off the camera. Don't see Wonder Woman. Stay at home and rent Wonder Woman. Turn off the camera. Many, many companies, great companies, companies in a totally different business are willing to do things and make things because that's what they do. They make product. They're willing to make product for us, medical product that we need very badly for the states that the states can't get, they haven't been able to get. And you know, most of the states, in no way did they do anything wrong. They were stocked up, they were all equipped. Unfortunately, they've never had a thing like this. So they need help from the federal government. So you haven't actually, directly, 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 directly. this is important. You haven't actually directed any companies to start making more ventilators or masks. I have, I have this, I have. Come on. And they're making a lot of ventilators and they're making a lot of masks. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. The American people are working because it's work. It's work not to work. This is the first time this has ever happened. And we're working out a tremendous financial package for them so they don't work. Who ever heard of this? Usually you work out a financial package to get people working. We're asking people not to work. Social distancing, a new term that's become probably the hottest term there is. To Dr. Fauci, if I could. Dr. Fauci, uh, as was explained yesterday, there has been some promise with hydroxychloroquine, this potential therapy for people who are infected with coronavirus. Is there any evidence to suggest that, as with malaria, it might be used as a prophylaxis no. against COVID-19? No, the, the answer is is no. And, and the, the evidence that you're talking about, John, is anecdotal evidence. So as the commissioner of FDA and the president mentioned yesterday, we're trying to strike a, a balance between making something with a potential of an, of an effect uh, to the American people available at the same time that we do it under the auspices of a protocol that would give us information to determine if it's truly safe and truly effective. But the information that you're referring to specifically is anecdotal. It was not done in a controlled clinical trial, so you really can't make any definitive statement about it. I think, uh, um, without uh, seeing too much, I'm probably more of a fan of that than, uh, maybe than anybody but I'm a big fan and we'll see what happens. And uh, we all understand what the doctor said is 100% correct. It's early, but uh, we've, uh, you know, I've seen things that are uh, impressive. No, the answer is, is no. We'll see, we're gonna know soon. We're gonna know soon, in including safety. But you know, when you get that safety, this has been prescribed for many years for people to combat malaria, which was a big problem and it's very effective. It's a strong, it's a strong drug, so we'll see against SARS. It was a very, it was, as I understand that, I, is that a correct statement? It was fairly effective on SARS. John, you've got to be careful when you say fairly effective. It was never done in a clinical trial. They compared it to anything. It was given to individuals and felt that maybe it worked. So you, but was there anything to compare it to? Yeah, well, that's the point. Whenever you do a clinical trial, you do standard of care versus standard of care plus the agent you're evaluating. That's the reason why we showed back in Ebola why particular uh, uh, interventions worked. Sir, on that topic, Sorry, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, about the possible therapies yesterday, Mr. President, you said that they were for, quote, immediate delivery, immediate. We heard no, we were ordering, uh, yes, we have uh, uh, millions of units ordered. Uh, Bayer is one of the companies, as you know, big company, very big, very uh, great company. Uh, millions of units are ordered, and we're going to see what happens. We're going to be uh, talking to the governors about it, and the FDA is working on it right now. Uh, the advantage is that it has been prescribed for a totally different problem, but it has been described for many years, and everybody knows the levels of, of uh, the, the negatives and the positives. But I will say that uh, I am a man that comes from a very positive school when it comes to, in particular, one of these drugs. And we'll see how it works out, Peter. I'm not, I'm not saying it will, but I, I think uh, that uh, people may be surprised. By the way, that would be a game changer. But we're going to know very soon. But but we have ordered millions of units. It's being ordered by, from Bayer. And there is another a couple of companies also that that do it. For clarity, Dr. Fauci said there is no magic drug for coronavirus right now, which you would agree. I guess on this issue, well, we'll, we'll you know, I, I think we only is disagree a little bit. Sorry. I disagree. Uh, Maybe, and maybe not. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. We have to see. No, the answer is, is no. Is We're gonna know. Is it, possible, is, it possible, is it possible that your impulse to put a positive spin on things 
may be giving Americans a false sense of hope. No, I don't think so. Any, I don't think so. This right now. No, I don't think so. I think that. Uh, I think it's got you know, uh, the not yet approved drug. Uh, such a lovely question. Um, look, it may work and it may not work. And I agree with the doctor what he said. No, the answer is is no. It may work, may not work. Uh, I feel good about it. It's all it is, just a feeling. I, you know, smart guy. No, the answer is is no. I feel good about it, and we're going to see. You're going to see soon enough. No, the answer is is no. And we have certainly some very big samples of people. If you look at the people, there are a lot of people that are in big trouble. And uh, this is not a drug that obviously. Uh, I think I can speak for a lot of from a lot of experience because it's been out there for over 20 years. So it's not a drug that you have a huge amount of danger with. It's not like a brand new drug that's been just created that may have an unbelievable monumental effect, like kill you. Uh, we're going to know very soon, and I can tell you the FDA is working very hard to get it out. Right now, in terms of malaria, if you want it, you can have a prescription. You get a prescription, and by the way, and it's very effective. It works. Uh, I have a feeling you may, and, and I'm not being overly optimistic or pes pessimistic. I sure as hell think we ought to give it a try. I mean, there's been some interesting things happened and some good, very good things. No, the answer is, is no. Uh, let's see what happens. We have nothing to lose. You know the expression? What the hell do you have to lose? Okay. What, so what do you say the Americans were scared, though? I guess nearly 200 dead. 14,000 who are sick, millions, as you witnessed, who are scared right now. What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. Right. I think there. it's a very nasty question, and I think it's a very bad signal that you're putting out to the American people. The American people are looking for answers, and they're looking for hope. And you're doing sensationalism. And uh, the same with NBC and Comcast. I don't call it, I don't call it Comcast, I call it Comcast. Let me just ask for whom you work. Let me just say something. That's really bad reporting. And you ought to get back to reporting instead of sensationalism. Let's see if it works. It might and it might not. I happen to feel good about it, but who knows? I've been right a lot. Let's see what happens, John. Can we come back to the science and the logistics? Be the, the, the units that were ordered, are they for clinical trials or are they for distribution to the general patient no. population? We are going to, as I understand it, we are going to be taking samples in New York. Governor Cuomo very much is interested in this drug, uh, and they are going to work on it also after they get a certain approval. We're waiting for one final approval from the FDA. We'll see what happens. But we'll use it on people that are not doing great or even at the beginning of not feeling well. Sort of fall un under the and John, what do we have to lose? So this it's, sort of wait, John, it's been out there for so long. We hear good things. Let's see, maybe it works and maybe it doesn't. I understand all that. I'm just thinking of the application here. So that would be under sort of a modified compassionate access. We're doing that, I guess, and that's that's what it's called, yeah. Yes. I, I would like Dr. Fauci, if you don't mind, uh, to follow up on what the president is saying. Should Americans have hope in this drug right now? And sir, I, I would like to follow up on Peter's question here. Could you please issue, uh, address Americans in this country who are scared right now? This is a very valid concern that people have. No, there really isn't that much of a difference in many respects with what we're saying. The president feels optimistic about something, his feeling about it. What I'm saying is that it might, it might be effective. I'm not saying that it isn't. It might be effective, but as a scientist, as we're getting it out there, we need to do it in a way as while we are making it available for people who might want the hope that it might work, you're also collecting data that will ultimately show that it is truly effective and safe under the conditions of COVID-19. So there really isn't different. It's just a question of how one feels about it. Is there any reason to believe it's not safe? But, well, they, certainly as a drug, it, a, any drug, John, has some toxicities. The decades of experience that we have with this drug indicate that the toxicities are rare and they are, in many respects, reversible. What we don't know is when you put it in the context of another disease, whether it's safe. Fundamentally, I think it probably is gonna be safe, but I like to prove things first. So it really is a question of not a lot of difference. It's the hope that it will work versus proving that it will work. 
So I don't see big differences here. I agree. Sir, Mr. Your President, yeah, I agree. Who are working at home, who have their children in their homes right now, who are homeschooling, doctors who say they don't have the masks they need to do their jobs. Your message to them. My message to the American people is that uh, there is a very low incidence of death. You understand that. And uh, we're going to come through this stronger than ever before. Uh, if you get it, if you happen to get it, uh, it is highly unlikely. It's looking like it's getting to a number that's much smaller than people originally thought in terms of the ultimate, uh, uh, the ultimate problem, which would be death. Uh, my message to the American people is, number one, you've done an incredible job. Incredible. What you've gone through, it's been incredible. It wasn't their fault. It wasn't their fault. It wasn't the fault of 140 other countries where this has happened. Uh, and there is tremendous hope. And I think we're going to come out stronger, better, bigger in every way. I think we're going to be a better country than we were before. And we learned a lot. We learned on reliance, who to rely on, who not to rely on. But our country, uh, our country has been incredible, the way they pulled together, including the fact that I just spoke to Senator Schumer. We had a wonderful conversation. We both want to get to a good solution. But it's been it really, for me, watching and seeing people that weren't speaking, getting along well, because we all have one common aim, and that's to get rid of this invisible enemy, get rid of it fast, and then go back to the kind of economy that we had, and maybe even better. Yeah, please. Second, if I may, sir, are you concerned about members of Congress that may have used information they learned on updates to sell stocks and profit off of this? I'm not aware of it. Uh, I saw some names. I'm not. I, I know all of them. Uh, I know uh, everyone mentioned uh, Diane Feinstein, I guess, and and uh, a couple of others. I, I don't know too much about what it's about. But I find them to all be very honorable people. That's all I know. And they, and they said they did nothing wrong. I, I find them, the whole group, very honorable people. Yeah, please. Hello, Mr. President, so the whole group would include Richard Burr, the head of the Intelligence Committee, and it also would include Senator Kelly Loeffler. And so the question is whether or not they should be investigated for that behavior. Well, it also includes Dianne Feinstein, a Democrat. You didn't mention her name. Why didn't you mention her name? And I think she's a very honorable person, by the way. So I'm not saying, but so you know, it's senator, interesting that you senator, mention two so people, but you don't mention one that happens to be a Democrat. Senator, any senator, should they be? I don't know, because I'd have to look at it, possibly, but I find them to be honorable people. Yeah. You said the other day you can hear yourself, you see yourself as a wartime president right now, leading the country through this pandemic that we're experiencing. Do you really think, you know, going off on Peter, going off on a network is appropriate? the country is going through something like that? I this? do, because I think uh, Peter is, uh, you know, I've dealt with Peter for a long time. And I think Peter is uh, not a good journalist when it comes to fairness. What do you think for your message to the country? Oh, I think it's a good message, Peter? because I think that the country has to understand that there is indeed, whether we like it or not, and some of the people in this room won't like it, uh, there's a lot of really great news and great journalism, and there's a lot of fake news out there. And I hear it all, and I see it all, and I understand it all because I'm in the midst of it. So when somebody writes a story or does a story on television, and I know it's false, I know it's fake, and when they say they have 15 sources have said, and I know there's no sources, there's no sources, they're just making it up. Uh, I know that, and I call Peter, I call Peter out, but I call other people out too. And you know, this is time to come together, but coming together is much harder when we have dishonest journalists. It's a very important profession that you're in. It's a profession that I think is incredible. I cherish it. But when people are dishonest, they truly do hurt our country. Yeah. Secretary of State Pompeo is extremely busy. So if you have any question for him right now, could you do that? Because you know what I'd like to do? I'd like them to go back to the State Department, or as they call it, the Deep State Department. You don't mind. I'd like to have him go back and... You know what I'd like to do? I'd like him to go back to the State Department, or as they call it, the Deep State Department. You know, Mike? I'd like to have him go back and uh, do his job. So does anybody have any questions? State Department, or as they call it, the Deep State Department. You know, Mike? I'd like to have him go back and uh, do his job. So does anybody have any questions? Please. Do you want the American people to be coming to trusted sources of information? Does it undermine you at all when the president stands up here and he attacks news outlets calling us untrustworthy? Does anybody else have a question? 
The Peace Corps volunteers have all the calling board department, the deep state department, at a time when thousands of diplomats are working very hard around the world to combat this pandemic. I've worked with the president for three years now. I know how much he values the people that work on my team. I know when I was the director of the Central Intelligence Agency how much he valued the work we did. I know that he watches our team, Dr. Brooks, all the team that's working to push back against this virus to keep America safe. I know how much he values them. What a good answer. Yes, sir. Mr. President, can I ask a question? Very true, too. Mr. Secretary, what, what message do you think it sends to other countries when you have the President of the United States lashing out at reporters? I, I, I've had my frustration with reporters, too. All I ask when I talk to the media is that you listen to what we say and report it accurately. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating when you see, when you see, when you see that that doesn't happen. It's, it's enormously frustrating. We have a responsibility to tell the American people the truth. And those who are reporting on what it is we're doing and saying have an equal responsibility to report accurately. What message does they send to countries when you're lashing out reporters? I've seen I've seen many things at the State Department be reported wildly and accurately on on multiple occasions, and I have spoken to those reporters about it each and every time, and I will continue to do so. Thank you, Mr. President. Excuse me, I didn't call you. Thank you, Mr. President. Two things in New York are doubling every day. They fear that supplies are going to run out in a matter of weeks. Yesterday, uh, Mayor Bill de Blasio called on you to mobilize the military to deliver urgent supplies. Yesterday, he said, quote, the fate of New York City rests in the hands of one man. He is a New Yorker, and right now he is betraying the city he comes from. Um, I've personally spoken to emergency department nurses who say that they're being told not to wear N95 masks because supplies are so low. So how do you respond to those remarks by Mayor de Blasio? Well, and I just think this. I'm, I'm, de I'm, not dealing, supplies yeah. arrive. I'm not dealing with him. I'm dealing with the governor. And the governor agrees with me, and I agree with him. So far, we've been very much in sync. I, I guess they're not agreeing with each other necessarily. but. Uh, the relationship with New York, I love New York. I grew up in New York, as you probably have heard, and uh, the relationship's been very good. And uh, I think uh, government and the governor have been getting along incredibly well with the federal government. Okay. We should note that just, you know, a few moments ago, the vice president was asked the same question. He responded very differently, instead telling Americans to be vigilant. He did not have any issues with that question the way that the president did. And of course, that comes as the president, you know, had been facing this initial criticism over how his administration has responded to the coronavirus. Okay, Mr. Vice President, you're the head of the task force. You've seen the numbers. You've spoken to average Americans. You're a former governor. What do you say to Americans right now who are watching and who are scared? I would say, do not be afraid, be vigilant. All the experts tell us that the risk of serious illness to the average American for the coronavirus is low. But we need every American to put into practice the president's coronavirus guidelines, 15 days to slow the spread, because the coronavirus is about three times more contagious than the flu, according to our best estimate and you can contract the coronavirus, have very mild symptoms, if any, uh, not even be aware that you have it, and expose someone who is vulnerable to a very serious health outcome. That's the reason why we're encouraging people to avoid groups of more than 10, to not eat in restaurants, but to use drive-throughs, to wash their hands on a regular basis. And particularly, we're going to continue, as the president has directed us, to focus on the most vulnerable population, which are seniors with serious underlying health conditions or anyone with an underlying immunodeficiency. It's those people we need to care for, but it's going to take all of us working together to make sure they're safe. Mr. Vice President, I have a question about testing. When will every American who needs a test get a test? And what will happen if you test negative? equipment being shipped right now to hospitals who need We're, it. You're hearing very positive things about testing, and just so you understand, we don't want every American to go out and get a test. 350 million people. We don't want that. We want people that are just, that, that have a problem, that have a, a problem with, they, they're sneezing, they're sniffling, they don't feel good, they have a temperature, there are a lot of different things. You know, you know them better than I do. So ready? We don't need that. But what we are having is we're having these private labs have come and they've been really fantastic. And we also have a great system for the future. Because as I said, 
We inherited, we, meaning this administration, an obsolete broken system that wasn't meant for anything like this. Now we have a system that you can see, because look, we're well into this and nobody's even talking about it, are, except for you, which doesn't American, surprise there me. There are Americans, though, which who say that they have me. symptoms and they can't get yeah, to well, okay. what, what do you yeah, say to the Americans I'm not, who are I'm not that hearing they have symptoms and they can't get We don't want everybody to go out and get a test, because there's no reason for it. Yeah. Americans who have symptoms we'll do one and more after this. Fauci, um, because uh, Kevin Hassett um, is one of the people who is now suggesting that the real way to get to the end of this, for life to return to normal, is for every single person living in this country to be tested. That way you can see who's contagious, and you can then have people who don't have it go back to work. Um, is there any possibility that this country could ever get to a point where every single person could be tested, and how long would that take? Yeah. Thank you for the question. I've heard that before. I don't see, I don't connect the dots there. I don't see how testing everybody in the country is going to help you to implement this. This should be implemented universally, at least at this level for everyone. The things we spoke about a while ago, that you want to really ratchet it up, like Governor Newsom is doing in California, like Governor Cuomo is doing in New York, or how you put an end to this outbreak. Testing is important. It would be nice to know, and there are certain things you could do. But let's not conflate testing with what we have to take. Whether or not you test, do this. I'm not, I'm not putting down testing as an important issue, but people seem to link them so much that if you don't have universal testing, you can't respond to the outbreak. You really can. But, but I do think, and that's after listening to Tony and everybody else that's an expert, I do think it's important that not everybody be tested if you feel great and if you have no symptoms whatsoever it's it's a it's just not a good thing to be doing All right steve yes, well, yes, sir, sir. Uh, a question yeah. for dr fauci uh, yesterday you mentioned the possibility of aerosol transmission of the virus how likely is that to happen I mean, that oh, the, the possibility of aerosol transmission always comes up when you have situations like that it comes up with influenza it came up with sars in which there was a documented you know, one-off episode of some aerosol transmission. Aerosol means that it can stay in the air for a period of time because it's in a droplet that's very small and doesn't go down. Is it possible and that there is aerosol transmission? Uh, yeah, it certainly is. But clearly, what we have seen in the situations where people have gotten infected from the areas that we have experienced, China, South Korea, now Europe, most of it is in a situation where people are close enough to each other that a symptomatic person will have a, dro a real droplet transmission. So I'm not ruling out the possibility that it's aerosol, but again, it's not gonna substantially change doing this. Let me just ask this in a very simple way. What is the demand pressure on testing in this country and are we meeting it? I get the same calls that many of you get, that someone goes into a place who has a symptom and wants to get a test, and for one reason or other, multiple logistic, technical, what have you, they can't get it. That is a reality that is happening now. Is it the same as it was a few weeks ago? Absolutely not, because as the secretary and others have said, right now that we have the private sector involved, the availability, not only just availability, but the implementation of the availability is getting better and better and better. Having said that, I, I understand and empathize with the people who rightfully are saying, I'm trying to get a test and I can't. So, so is that a way of saying we are not yet at a point where we are meeting the demand pressure? Well, the answer is yes, uh, John. We are not there yet because otherwise people would be never calling up saying they can't get a test. Well, I just can't emphasize enough about the incredible progress that we have made on testing. All of your reporting um, and, and um, media outlets around the country are as well that, um, that many, many more tests are being performed every day, literally by the tens of thousands. And this has only been made possible because several weeks ago the president brought in the commercial labs, these enormous companies, Quest and LabCorp, working with companies like Croche and and Abbott uh, Laboratories and Thermo Fisher and said, we have this existing system of state laboratories and the CDC processing uh, tests for certain infections. 
But given the magnitude of this outbreak, the president apprehended early on that it wouldn't be enough to meet the need. And I just want every American to know that literally hour by hour, um, in partnership with these extraordinary commercial labs, we are making more and more tests available every day. We'll detail uh, the way that we're working with states to distribute those tests. We've obviously focused on states uh, that have been dealing uh, with, with the most serious outbreaks of coronavirus, Washington State, California, New York, and others. We've been making sure the tests are in those areas, working closely with those governors. But uh, I think the American people should be encouraged at the progress that we are making. Tomorrow we'll take some time to detail that progress for you. But I would say to any American uh, who might be concerned that they have symptoms, as the president said so well, we, we don't want every healthy American to get a test. Um, but if people feel that they have symptoms, that they identify with the coronavirus, call your doctor. Uh, their doctor can call their state health authorities that can work very closely with our entire team through HHS and FEMA and work to identify the more and more tests that are available every day. Just, just so you know, let, just for the program, uh -huh. uh, I, this administration, inherited an obsolete broken old system that wasn't meant for this we discarded that system and we now have a new system that can do millions of people as you need them but we had to get rid of a broken old system that didn't work it worked only on a very limited basis and we're very proud of what we've done it's incredible what we've done and this system will now serve for the future, for future problems. Hopefully you don't have a problem like this, but something will come up. We have now a great system, and it's almost fully in gear, but it's able to test millions of people. But we inherited a broken, old, uh, frankly, a terrible system. We fixed it, and we've done a great job. And we haven't been given the credit that we deserve, that I can tell you. But. The one that really deserves the credit are the American people, because they are doing things that nobody thought they would do. What they're doing is incredible, and we're making a lot of progress, and we'll see you folks tomorrow. Thank you very much.